It's not October anymore, but that doesn't mean I can't hunt for some vampires. Power vampires, I mean. My power company sends me a little report every month saying how much I used compared to my neighbours. I'm usually on the lower end in the summer, since I don't have air conditioning. But in the winter, I'm above them all, presumably because of all the computers in my house. But it's not the high-end computers I'm thinking about today. I'm looking for vampires. But what do I mean by that? Well, a power vampire is a device that still uses energy when it's quote-unquote off. I'm also going to be lumping in smart devices here, since they're just always on by default. I'm going to add them all up and see how much of my 450 kilowatt hour monthly usage is taken up by secret evil vampires. I've seen some weird misinformation going around that says that phone and laptop chargers, like this laptop power supply, will draw power regardless of whether they're plugged in or not. So you should always unplug them. And while this is probably true in that some chargers, including this one, have LEDs on them, the current a single blue LED uses is so minimal that even multiplying it by 120 to get the wattage, it's still less than 0.1, lower than my power meter can even measure. And I'm not sticking a multimeter in here to get a milliamp and milliwatt reading. Remember, we're dealing in kilowatts here. So what does actually use power, and how much of it am I wasting? Let's start up here in my big bedroom display. I have a few of these little smart plugs and outlets which turn things on and off on a schedule. On at sunset and off at bedtime. I'm not going to measure the lights themselves, just the outlets. So you see, power meter with just the outlet plugged in. These single ones use about a watt. So three of those means three watts so far. And the strips use about three watts each. So right now the total is 12 watts from smart plugs alone. That doesn't sound like a lot, but 12 times 24 times 30 equals 8.6 kilowatt hours. These stupid little things account for almost 2% of my monthly energy bill. That's not what's plugged into them, remember. That's just the switches. And I'm only just getting started. I'm sure, like me, you have a few of these laying around. Amazon, Google, or Apple, whichever company you prefer to spy on you. I have three, plus one with a display. The speakers individually use about 1.7 to 2 watts, and the display uses about 3 watts, which is impressive considering the screen. Running total is 21 watts, but we're not done upstairs yet. I also have a robot vacuum cleaner that uses another 6 watts, so 27, and then another 2 watts from my Switch, 2 watts from a Chromecast, and 10 watts from this small TV I have on my VR PC. Speaking of this PC, this is what I'd consider a modern high-end PC, with a 3700X and a 3080. Shut down or sleeping, it draws about 2 watts. Which, I didn't realise it was possible for it to draw power while it was turned off. Perhaps it's listening to wake on land commands while it's off. So what are we up to now? 43 watts for everything in my bedroom. Not including, you know, actually using it for anything. Downstairs we go. Now here is where I expect to see some big numbers. I mean, look at the size of that TV, right? Now here's the biggest surprise. That big 75-inch TV uses zero watts on standby. I'm not kidding. When it's running, it uses 300. But when on standby, it's zero. I guess for Hisense, standby means off. Unlike the small Samsung upstairs drawing 10 watts at all times. I guess I should unplug that one, huh? The rest of the home theatre is relatively conservative, with the soundbar only using about 2 watts, the Nvidia Shield drawing 8, and each surround speaker only drawing 1 watt. Oh, and I guess plus a Plex server and an Ethernet switch at 4 watts and 5 watts respectively. So the vampiric drain for the movie watching experience is 21 watts. Add that to the 43 from upstairs and we're up to 64 watts. But there's an elephant in my uh, TV unit. Well, two white elephants. The PS5 and the Series S. The PS5 in rest mode, while charging its controller, used 12 watts, which is pretty high, but it's not bad. Without the controller, it's only 4 watts. So once the controller's fully charged, you should be good. The Series S, on the other hand, used a whopping 18 watts on standby. That is dreadful. And the Series X is even worse. But the saving grace is that there's an energy saver mode that uses just 0.5 watts. The downside to that is that it's basically just shutting the whole console down, which is so inconvenient and annoying that I bet most people just use the default sleep mode and waste 18 watts. I was going to mention my router and modem, but the problem is that internet access is basically essential to exist in today's world. So even though they draw about 10 watts each, I think they should go in the same category as a fridge. Yeah, it 
runs all day and night, but I, I do kind of need it. Okay, so what's our grand total? I'm going to use the 12 watt PS5 number instead of the 18 watt Xbox number, since the controller needs charging every day anyway. God, the battery on these things is awful. And it bridges a gap between the Xbox and PlayStation. With that included, the total vampiric power drain in my house is 76 watts. 76 times 24 times 30 is just under 55 kilowatt hours, or about 12% of my total energy bill. Now my house is a special case, since I have a server rack with two more NASes and a Windows server box, which is why I didn't include the 120 watts from that. But the fact that $9 a month of my power bill is going to nothing is pretty wild. If you multiply it out over a year, it's well over $100, or almost 660 kilowatt hours being completely wasted. That's enough to recharge your average electric car from empty to full 10 times. I'm definitely unplugging that blasted Smaznug TV upstairs, and I think I'll ditch all the Google Homes too. Even the smart plugs can be replaced with mechanical outlets, though mechanical timers do use power too, so maybe I'll just stick with these little vampires. It is pretty cool to do this. I get pretty cheap electricity in Colorado, but in the UK, where my family lives, power is three times more expensive per kilowatt hour. So that $9 becomes $27, and the yearly cost grows to $324. And suddenly, it starts looking a lot more important to check how much power those convenient little devices use. Oh, and maybe unplug your Xbox from the wall so it doesn't bankrupt you. I'll see you next time.